I'm now standing here at my farm and uh, I have my Cenarian Zygomite that is grown up to an adolescent which means that when I gather produce I will get the last ingredient to make the extreme invention potion. This took quite a long grind as you might have seen in my last video but it's finally done. Before that I want to say I do have a discord if you want to join that the link to it is always at the top of the description but let's gather produce get those mycelian webbing and also some farming experience and we can now make two extreme invention potions that uh, boost my skill by 17 which means I need 90 invention to be able to make the alchemical onyx which is all the way down here which is going to be the luck of the dwarves and the eleven necklace which I can't really remember the exact name of. Before we start working on 90 invention, I do have some daily challenges I completed. The fletching one, woodcutting, is not extended, but then the hunter and herblore one are extended, and I haven't completed the construction one, but uh, let's claim quite a lot of experience. 281,000 experience and 120,000 herblore, which means I'm very close to 96 herblore. Only 17k off, and we're going to do Tears of Gothics for probably like 60,000 archaeology experience. I actually got 200 tiers this time, so how much experience is that going to be on archaeology? 60,000 exactly, so that is the maximum amount you can actually get, and that is also 60 in every skill. Very nice. About to get 89 invention here, I got my augmented chaotic staff to 10 and I don't really need this chaotic staff in general because I have the noxious one so I'm just going to disassemble it for 540,000 invention experience so let's do that. 16 swifting components as well and that is now 89 invention. I need to get two more items to 12 and siphon them or 1 to 10 and 1 to 12 and uh, disassemble one of them and I'm going to be done with 90 invention. A good way to actually get my ascension crossbow closer to level 12 from 10 is to use my ascension keystones that I farmed in the end of my last video. I have 18 quintus and 15 quarters so I have an okay chance of getting at least one of the signets I need to be able to get my second ascension crossbow. If I do manage to get both of them, I do have to go to Tormented Demons and get a new Dragon Limb to make it, but that is not a big deal. So let's start using all the Quintus Keys. First 10 Quintus Keys, no Signet yet, but still have 8 more to go. I actually thought I was recording, I wasn't unfortunately, but uh, I did get the Quintus Signet, which is super good. Because this one I remember grinding for a very long time to actually get the first one and now we got the second one pretty fast you can see that I have the signet in the inventory and if I do get the quarters one with the keys I do have I will actually be able to if I get the dragon limbs as I said make a second ascension crossbow instead of the chaotic one so let's see if we can manage to get that on the Quartus keys. Unless this is the signet right here, I did not get the Quartus one, but I still need to get my legs and my weapon higher. I didn't get it even to level 11 on those bosses. So we will be trying to get more Quartus keys from just killing Roari on that grind to 90 invention. As a matter of fact, there might be another way I can get to 90 invention and that is just by discovering new things on the desk and you actually get a lot of experience for doing this and I can actually with this potion get a lot of new things to invent uh, or discover rather and it is going to be a lot of experience you can see here 20,000 plus 50,000 for very good I could get a bit more experience if I change them around a bit more but I think that's fine I'm not going to uh, care too much about it 71,000 experience in invention for just that one thing and I can invent all of these and then also I can drink the extreme invention potion and get all the way to 106 and uh, discover even more. So I'm just going to discover a lot of different things with a one sip of this potion. Let's see if we can get to 90. First off, uh, let's see how it looks without the potion. This is all the things. Let's drink the potion and we now have 106 and this is all the things I can now discover. Look at that, 120,000, almost 130,000 experience for one single discovery. With just about a minute left of the potion, we get 90 invention. So now, now I will be able to uh, discover the alchemical onyx. So let's do that. Let's see if it actually gives more experience than the other things or if it's around the same. Which is like 35,000 base and then 70k-ish extra after that so uh, 40k base so that is a bit more experience 
Yeah, I'm going to get like 150,000 for this uh, discover, which is <laughs> really good invention experience to say the least. Managed to get perfect at the end of the potion. Oh no, no way. Did I actually just drop that? Wait, can I drink another one? And I can still get the perfect one? Oh no. Okay, I have to do it again, I guess. There we go, got that 200,000 perfect. And now we have the alchemical onyx discovered. So let's get all the components and make the two items I want to make. The uh, necklace and the ring. In case you're wondering, discovering all these things from just one potion gave me 3.4 million invention experience. Now to be able to make the two alchemical onyxes for the necklace and the ring I need a total of 100 fortunate components, 100 refined and 20 precious components and I am now getting the refined ones by refining junk. Then I will get easy 100 through just uh, disassembling my composite bows that I have. I have like 100 of them basically. And I already have the 20 precious components so I'm going to be done very soon. So I have all the different things now and I just have to drink an extreme invention potion again and go to the crafting table, go to I think it is misc support and there we go the alchemical onyx, I can make two of them, I have 21 precious, 102 refined and exactly 100 of the fortunate components, so let's make two of those and then we can make both the ring. Oh wow, 10,000 invention experience. It's actually not bad invention experience making these. I think these are like 65 mil each. Yep, 63 mil each. So just these two are like 125 million or something. But uh, let's make the necklace and the ring. Let's make sure I only make one of each. I don't actually make both rings. That would be very awkward. How much crafting? 4,000 crafting experience. That is a lot of crafting experience. And then the necklace as well. I guess 4k for that one as well, so 8k crafting, and now we have the alchemical onyx necklace and ring. So let's just uh, get all the runes to uh, enchant both of them. And for that I need cosmic runes, I need fire and earth. So let's take out all the fire and all the earth ones, and let's enchant both of these. Lock of the dwarves, and then I will get the grace of the elves necklace done. So now that I have these items, I'm going to explain why they are so good. First off, you can actually set up a teleport on the Grace of the Elves necklace to any of these locations. And you can actually get two, but you need 15 max stats to be able to have two different teleports. I'm just going to put mine on Jadinko Lair right now, because I do want to train maybe some wood, uh, wood cutting in there with the super heat form. Which is another thing the necklace is very good for. It halves the prayer drain rate of a light form, super heat form and chronicle absorption. Also it, uh, as you can see, occasionally spawns a Seren Spirit and what a Seren Spirit does is it uh, gives you a random rare drop table item sent to your bank. And you can also stack a sign of porters in this. So I'm going to show you guys a maximum charge of 500, use them all and that's how many porters you can keep in this necklace. You can see 500 out of 500. So there's a lot of benefits to this and that is just one of the items. Now the Luck of the Dwarves have 17 in all stats, which is a bit better than the Death Touch bracelet, but that one also has the 3 prayer bonus and of course the effect of 20% chance to reflect damage. But the Asylum Surgeon Ring is a good comparison. It has 21 in all stats, so a bit better than the Luck of the Dwarves. But the Luck of the Dwarves Ring has the uh, added benefit to have teleports like a Ring of Wealth. And it also has the added benefit of giving you a very small extra chance of getting rare drops. I think it's a 1%, so it's not a big thing. But um, it does also give you a bigger chance of getting the Hazel Mirror signet or whatever it's called so that is a good thing about the ring as well but as you can see it is a decent stated ring regardless so now that i have the grace of the elves necklace i actually want to try to train some mining with the porters in it but uh, why am i here then at the divination mini game well, I am here to collect porters. I pretty much only have these 500 charges and that is not going to be enough for all the mining I want to do. So I'm going to collect these memory shards and also at the same time gain a lot of divination experience towards that 99. And as you can see here, I, if I want to make a Sino Porter 5, which is the highest one I can currently make, 
that is 22 memory shards and they go up pretty fast in this mini game. That's how I got all the other ones that I just put in my necklace. So we will be here for quite a while getting quite a lot of divination experience and also collecting all of these to make a lot of signer porters. After not even doing this for a very long time, I remembered how overpowered this is in terms of experience, so I might actually be here for quite a while. I already hit 91 divination and already closing up on 92, I've gained almost 600,000 experience. And uh, divination is a very good skill to have at least 95 for invention charge to be able to collect the incandescent wisps. It is quite different from the tier 90 wisps in terms of divine charges. So I'm at least going to go for 95. And then uh, I will get quite a lot of memory charge from that because I'm already at 466, which is 16 signs of porter. So we will be here for quite a while, as I said. 93 divination and I have 1.4k memory shards but I just wanted to show you guys something real quick that I got informed by a comment and uh, it is the uh, crest framework at 98 archaeology when converting memories at the rift you convert the entire backpack in one go having that relic basically cuts down the time on getting divine charge by 50% and uh, of course getting a lot more divine charge is really really useful so i'm going to probably do my best to work on archaeology as much as possible with the daily challenges and actually going out there and doing some archaeology training normally now and then when i get the time so uh, might be doing a bit more of that in the near future it has been a while, but uh, 3.1 million divination experience later, I'm about to get 95 and be able to collect in the incandescent memories or whatever they're called, incandescent, yeah, that, that's the ones. But uh, now I can make quite a lot of signer porters. I have 2.8k memory shards almost. Got quite a lot of daily challenges completed as well, extended both the archaeology and the summoning one, that's usually what I do, and let's claim the reward and see how much experience we get. 340,000 total experience, how much? 28,000 archaeology, 137,000 summoning, very good. So from all the memory shards I've used up now, I got 135 Sino Porters 5, which is, I mean it's a lot, but in the grand scheme of things I will need so many. But I'm going to go into mining now and see what we can end up at. I think the goal for this video is going to get to 89 so I can mine Seren Stones. Uh, it's very AFK and I don't need any porters or anything like that. And uh, next goal after that might be 90 for the light animica or however you pronounce that dark animica. Uh, to be able to make the masterwork gear and so on later on or elder rune I think it's called. And I don't know how useful that is but uh, regardless I do want to get from 84 mining to 89 in this video as the goal. After all that, I don't even need the porters. I just made a Bane Ore box, I didn't even know these existed. So I will save the porters for something else. 726,000 mining experience deep and I'm pretty close to 87. I'm going to, as I said, go for 89. And uh, I thought that this Bane Ore box would be kind of tedious because it only contains 120 ores and the uh, necklace can keep 500. So it would be a bit less AFK having to go to the bank all the time, put them in the bank and then come back. Back. but uh, mining bane is kind of slow at my level so it really isn't that bad i can afk for quite a while before it's at 120 and then i'll just go bang for like five seconds at the uh whatever it's called war retreat war retreat and then i just come back here it takes like one minute so yeah, I didn't even need all those porters, but uh, it is definitely super good that I do have the porters because I heard from a guy from my Discord that uh, archaeology is very, very good with porters. You will go through like a bunch of porters when training archaeology and it is a skill, as I said, I want to actually get into. So I will save all the porters for that unless I realize something else, but I think that is what I'm going to go for. I can't actually even express how good the Grace of the Elves is. I just got a Seren Spear that gave me 51 Super Restores for those. That is so good. I mean, it's going to save me so much time having to get restores. Halfway done with the last level and look at that. 773 U-Logs. That is uh, some free fire making experience towards 99. 
There we go, that is 89 mining, which is now 7 stones. And before I go away from this place, I'm actually going to open all these 8 metamorphic geodes. That is how many I got in total from all the mining that I did. So they're pretty rare to get. I think it's like 1% chance when you get one of these ingenious geodes, which gives basically nothing. They give like topazes and stuff. That you get this uh, metamorphic one that gives you way better stuff. So let's see what we get from these. First one, a strange rock, and uh, I think this is uh, actually high level smithing to make like the masterwork gear and all that. Uh, 100 corrupted ore, I think you get actually a rock every single time you open. First age coin, actually no idea what that is. 1 million alk. That is uh, nice money, I don't say no to that at all. Even more alloy bars, these rewards are insane and I can get a lot of experience from just uh, these stones as well. It's going to be pretty good to uh, get all that. Another first age coin, 1 million GP and the last one is some Hydrix ball tips which are how much each? They're 6k each Alk. I, I thought it were 13k Alk but yeah it's not that crazy. So from that I got almost 3000 Bainite or 2960 and I'm going to put it all into the metal bank and we're going to see how much smithing experience I get from using all of that and I think it should be about the same as that you got from mining so I should be getting around 1.6 million mining but I guess we will have to see. So I've got 644 Bane Bars left and I've got 1.3 million smithing experience but I actually just recently realized I can spend the respect that I have in this store right here and I bought the blacksmith's helmet and top which gives 1% smithing experience more for each piece and they are 50% respect so I guess to get the full set of 5 pieces you need 250% so 150% more to get the full outfit. Don't think I will get that from the bars I have left but I did actually get a daily challenge of smithing that I extended. So let's see what uh, we're going to get 82,000 smithing experience extra for that. And uh, I'm pretty close to done with this now so it seems like it should be fairly equal to my mining. Still have like 400 Bane Bars and I've already surpassed the mining experience. I guess it's because I get some extra experience from these items as well as you get recipes from sometimes from this guy and you can get like 10,000 extra experience as well as the daily challenge that I did. But I can get another piece of blacksmith armor so let's do that real quick. And I get the legs so now I'm going to be having 3% bonus experience for the rest of the bars. Used to bother Bane bars I had and I was like 10,000 experience of 89 smithing so I just finished that on some rune bars. And now I can smelt the corrupted ore and smelt Bane bars 50% faster. Wow that is quite a difference actually. <laughs> that is a massive increase in experience if I would keep doing Bane. But um, now I can both mine and smith corrupted ore which is going to be a very nice way to get 99 mining and smithing if I wanna AFK it completely. Though when I do get to 90 I do wanna dabble a bit in the elder rune stuff that you can make because it seems like you can actually make some decent stuff. The tier 90 for example two handed sword if I go all the way to plus 5 this unfortunately doesn't have the uh, same stats as a dragon rider lance it's actually worse than that. So even if it's tier 90 it is a bit worse so the weaponry is not that good. I guess it could be decent for one hands because I don't really have any good one hands. But I uh, guess the gear could be pretty good as well but it is tank gear and in RS3 tank gear is not extremely useful. Let's end the video with another 56,000 archaeology experience from the Tears of Gothics minigame. And uh, I think I should be getting fairly close to being able to use another part of a dig site. And I really do want to get into some more archaeology. I mean, I've really only been doing the weekly events and the daily stuff for archaeology. But in the next video, I think I'm going to try to actually do some archaeology manually. So, uh... Hopefully you guys will watch that video, hope you guys did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see my future content. Until then, have a good one, take care.